in about two thirds of the world, Christians of one stripe or another face some sort of harassment. It can result in imprisonment, torture, and even martyrdom for the cause of Jesus Christ. The level of brutality is almost unbelievable. Christians in innumerable countries are under huge amounts of pressure, either from the government or from the societies in which they find themselves. They number some 2.2 billion people, and harassment can range from loss of life to loss of livelihood. Christians have become an endangered species in some countries of the world. I want to say thank you for joining Lorna and I today for The Persecuted Church. And in this episode of Persecuted Church, we are dealing with the best-selling book. You almost were going to say what it is. Let me give you some <laughs> facts which will help you to understand exactly what we're talking about. It's the world's best-selling book. Uh, it's the world's best-selling book every year and even every week. Billions of copies of it are sold worldwide. Every year, 100 million copies of this book are given away. It's the most translated book in the world, 670 languages. I didn't know there were 670 languages in the world, but that's how many it's been translated or parts of it have been translated so far. And it's downloaded onto mobile phones, onto computers hundreds of times. What book are we talking about? We're talking about the Bible. And I really hope by the end of this program, you will love your Bible more and more, and you will be challenged how important it is to get into the world. Just imagine for a moment, we've got Charles Dickens' books here, we've got William Shakespeare's books here, and we've got the Bible there. What makes the difference? There are lots and lots of great and tremendous pieces of literature, but there's only one book which is God-breathed. The Word of God is living and is powerful and sharper than a two-edged sword. That's what we're talking about today. And a book which governments and worlds across the world are seeking to ban because they understand how important it is. And it is more precious than gold. The Word of God is a fire. It washes you. It breathes on you because it is living. I grew up in a family who went to church every Sunday and we had our precious Bible on a bookshelf in our kitchen and on a Sunday morning we would get up, we would have our breakfast, we'd put our best clothes on and before we went to church we'd go to the shelf, get the Bible down and carry it very carefully to church. And when the readings were given and when the messages were given, we'd open it and we'd read it. Then we'd walk back from church and at the end of the service when we'd come back home, we'd put it back on the shelf and there it would remain until the following Sunday. Because in my family as I grew up, we didn't understand the importance of the world. Lorna, your family was different, wasn't it? Well, completely different. And at the age of 17, when I came to know the Lord and I got my Bible and was reading it, my dad found it very hard and he did not even like it in the house. And that is how powerful the Word of God is because it is living. So the Bible is very precious. Uh, and yet, as we said, in many parts of the world, it, it is a, a book that is banned because governments understand that this is, is a book which they've got to work against because it's God himself in uh, working in it through the, the lives of believers. And some of the, the countries which particularly are seeking to, to ban the Bible are countries like, well, uh, North Korea, that's something we seem to talk about every week. Um, Somalia, uh, the Maldives, uh, Libya, Uzbekistan, China, and so the list goes on. Well, you've just mentioned Maldives, Gordon. There are so many people 
that go on holiday to the Maldives, have their honeymoon in the Maldives because it is a beautiful country. It's got beautiful white sands, beautiful clear water. But the thing is that people don't know about it. It is a very strict Muslim country and you are not allowed even to have a Bible there. So I'm sure people, when they go on holiday there, are quite ignorant of that fact. That's right, but Korea, North Korea is the same. If you have a Bible in North Korea, then you face imprisonment, you face torture, and you face even death. And, and not just a printed book like this you're allowed. Even if you have just handwritten, uh, as, as some people have done who haven't got Bibles, they've copied someone else's Bible and got a handwritten, even having a handwritten will mean you face imprisonment, torture, and death. And we, we in the West can't even imagine what it is to be like to be without no. the Word of God, That's can right. we? So, Somalia is another country. Somalia is, is, is a war-torn country. There's so much strife of a people there. There are secret Christians there, but they have to be secret because if they make their faith known or if they have a scripture of any kind, that they're just going to be imprisoned and they could face death. So that's why I want to encourage you to treasure the Word of God. You treasure it because we need it and one day it might be taken away from us. China is another country. China is interesting because it has registered churches and underground churches. But one of the things that China has done recently is to ban online. So anyone who tries to go online to get the scriptures cannot do that any, anymore. And we'll come back to China a little later on. But Lorna, the wonderful news is men and women who love the Lord are seeking to take in the scriptures. Uh, Brother Andrew of Open Doors that we've talked about before, of course, he, that's how, how he began his ministry, smuggling Bibles into communist countries. David Hathaway, who we programs we have on Revelation that's TV, right. he, he began with tour groups and in the buses were Bibles. He ended up in prison because of what he'd done. We're going to be looking at some of the stories of people today who are so heroic in terms of smuggling Bibles to those who are desperately for them. And we start today with Patrick Klein, the founder of Vision Beyond Border, and the work that he's doing in smuggling Bibles. My name is Patrick Klein, and I actually have a ministry called Vision Beyond Borders. Um, actually, our passion, my passion is to get Bibles into closed countries where Christians are persecuted for their faith, where they do not have access to the Word of God. And when you go to communist and Muslim countries, a lot of them forbid bringing the Bibles in the country because they do not want people to follow Jesus Christ. And we know it's really, ultimately, it's Satan that doesn't want people to serve Jesus Christ. So these governments are under the influence of the evil one but yet we are given the Great Commission to carry the gospel to all people around the world. And so I believe that we need to carry Bibles to God's people around the world to help them to get to know what God requires of them, what God is like, and, and to know about Jesus Christ and grow in their relationship with the Lord. But also we need to provide them to those who don't even know about Jesus Christ yet. So I feel a passion from the Lord that I need to get Bibles to people who are crying out to them around the world. Recently, I was going into a communist country. Um, there was a woman next to me, and she had a lot of luggage and stuff like that. I had my backpack on and my roller bag full of Bibles. And so I'm walking along just praying as I'm going through the customs. All of a sudden, they grab this lady on the side of me and pull her off to the side to search her bags. And I kept walking, and I'm just praying in the spirit. And there's a man in front of me, and all of a sudden, they grab him and pull him off to the side. And I just kept walking, and I got right through the customs. And then another time recently, I was going through and, and a customs guard went to reach out to grab me and he got his, half, his hand about halfway out and he stopped and he just let me go. And I don't know if there was an angel in front of me, but it was just amazing. And then one time I had a team, there was 10 of us on the team. Uh, we, had, we had 1,400 pounds of Bibles, 140 pounds a piece. Uh, these are Bibles for the tribal Christians in their country. And we were just praying for a miracle. And so we got up by the customs. There were four customs guards lined against the wall, an x-ray machine, and we had to walk through them, 10 of us, with two big black duffel bags apiece, plus our roller bags and supplies. And so we walked right through them. They never even noticed us, we walked right through. And I was talking to a friend of mine in the States and she said, you know, Pat, I've been praying you'd be invisible. I said, please keep praying that. God is using it, you know, and 
what was really amazing to me was one of the pastors could not afford to come to the hotel to pick up the Bibles. He was so poor. And so I just said to him, I said, you come, I'll pay your taxi fare. He came and, and I gave him like equivalent to about $20 in their, in their money. And we loaded seven big duffel bags full of Bibles into that van. And he said to me, he said, thank you. Thank you, God bless you. God bless you. And I literally felt a blessing come on me. I wanted to weep because he had nothing to give me in the natural, but he spoke God's blessing over me. And that's how grateful these people are when they get Bibles to take back to their congregations. They're so grateful and so hungry for the Word of God. And I'm just blessed to be able to go and, and be Jesus' hands and his feet and to bring the Word of God to them. What an amazing ministry of David Klein from Vision Patrick. Beyond, Patrick Klein from Vision Beyond uh, Borders and the work that they're doing. They're proving God, aren't they? Well, that's right. They prayed and look how they were even made invisible as they were going through. There's no doubt that God is on their case because he knows that his word has got to get out because it is the love letter to the church. That's right. The other thing he brought out, of course, was he believes in angels and he really believes that angels were Amen. guiding and guarding them. And uh, we, we just need, it's taking God at his word, isn't it? But they're taking a word in because they believe that it is powerful, it is sharper, it, it does divide to asunder, but, but it's God. Yes. That's the wonderful thing about it. Well, if you talked to any believer in one of the countries we were talking about, and there are many other countries where the Bible is banned, all of them would say to you two things. First of all, they would say, please pray for us. And the other thing they'd say, please can we have a Bible? They just simply long. Can you imagine trying to live your Christian life and not have a Bible to it? No, you, ca you, you can't, you can't. But we've got a video of two very special ladies, haven't we? We have uh, uh, Miriam and Marzia, and they were both uh, Muslims, uh, loved the Quran, read it devotedly, but they became dissatisfied with their faith. They lived in Iran. They were converted to Christianity. They had a personal encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. And they began to share with others the Word of God. And they began to smuggle in Bibles. And they were willing to do it even though it was at the risk of their very life. Two remarkable ladies, and I think you're going to be blessed as you listen to their story. Listen to it now. We both felt that we had the same passion about our country to return to our country and to share this message with our people. That's why even though we knew that how much is dangerous, we decided to go. And we uh, called our pastor, he was in uh, London, and we asked him to send uh, thousands of uh, Bibles. And uh, it wasn't easy for them. And we received uh, those New Testaments and we started our first mission. And usually at night we carried about 140 New Testaments in our uh, backpack and put them in the uh, mailboxes. I remember sometimes it was uh, during the winter we had to walk for long hours, for about eight, nine hours. And after almost three years, uh, we could distribute uh, 20,000 uh, New Testaments. There are some stories, amazing stories, that how God protected us and we could see his miracles. We were distributing Bibles, we were talking to people, and we were having these two house churches in our own apartment. And we knew that it was risky. We spent almost nine months in prison and 14 days we were separated. We were um, staying in solitary confinement. And I can say uh, during those nine months, we had almost about 10 trials, 10 courts. And in each court, the judges our, and our interrogators would threaten us to execution by hanging. And they, they wanted to put pressure on us to deny our faith in Jesus. We didn't have Bible with us, but uh, we learned how to live with the verses uh, of Bible. And every day we were praying and uh, asking God to give us uh, this power to live uh, those verses and to show him through, those, uh, uh, through our behaviors to prisoners. It was um, almost... Uh, uh, at the nine months that uh, uh, we heard that uh, we have we had many supports from different uh, parts of the world, and because of all these uh, supports, the the government had to release us, unlike their desires. 
And you know, Marzi mentioned about those Bibles that we were distributing. At that time, we were just praying for those Bibles. We didn't, we didn't know who would get those Bibles. And we were invited to a church. After our speech, um, a couple came up uh, on the stage and they were, uh, both of them, they were crying and they started to share their stories. They said that um, the wife found one of those Bibles that we put in, the, in their mailboxes and they found the Bible and the whole family came to Christ just by reading that um, New Testament that we put in their mailboxes. What remarkable young ladies. I hope as you watch the persecuted church that you have your prayer journal with you. And if you do, that you're writing down the names of the countries to pray for and the individuals to pray for, make a point of writing down the names of Miriam and Marzia. They're two young ladies who are currently in the United Kingdom. They want to go back to Iran. They want to continue to share the gospel because the Lord is so real to them. They want others in the country of Iran to know as well. Wonderful ladies, yeah. aren't they? Just two ordinary young ladies, but they're taking God at his word. I hope it makes you as excited as it does me, just knowing how powerful the word of God is when it goes into people's lives. Well, one of the things we were going to do before and we, we didn't do was to share our favorite scriptures. And if I'd have had my opportunity, I was going to say Psalm 119, verse 105, a scripture that says that the Lord will direct our footsteps and be a light to our path. I came to know the Lord through the work of uh, Scripture Union, and they used to have a little picture of a lamp. Do you remember it? An oil lamp and the oil pouring that's out. That's right. But, but that's what the Lord is. He's someone who directs our paths. And so far, we've been looking at, at pieces where people have been going through the borders, carrying the Bibles with them. But sometimes you need discernment. And the discernment says, no, that's not the way. You need to have new and innovative ways of carrying the scriptures in and letting people have them. Wonder what ideas would come to your mind? Well, in our next piece, we uh, have Foley Hon Suk, who's the president of VOM Korea. And these are some of the ways that she and her team smuggle Bibles into North Korea. Foley Hyun Suk mainly works on spreading Christianity to North Korea. The most widely used method is to hang up Bibles on balloons and then let the balloons fly to the north. The Bibles that are sent to North Korea are manufactured based on precise calculations on how much weight the balloons can handle. On the sack full of Bibles, a rubber tube is attached and a formula is pumped into the rubber tube. It takes two hours for the formula to melt the rubber tube, and once the rubber melts, the sack will open, dropping the Bibles. Some things are hand-delivered over the border. These are clothes with hidden verses of the Bible sewn into them. Here the underground Christians are waiting inside a safe house for these items. The most important thing is that they return safely to North Korea with these items.
Here are two underground Christians. The problem is how to bring these into North Korea. They must evade the eyes of border patrol or customs. We got permission to conduct an interview with them, with great difficulty. The underground Christians return to North Korea, holding on to the very things that could endanger their lives. They will nurture their dangerous and lonely faith in that hostile land. Just think, as this program is taking place, right now, people are taking Bibles into some of these countries, into, into China, into to Iran, into Iraq, into Algeria, into uh, Afghanistan, all so many countries, the Maldives, uh, that we've been talking about. And they face real danger by doing that. But so precious is the Word of God to them that they're willing to do it. And I pray that it's as precious as it is to them, that it's as precious to us. I, I found that last piece just, every time I've seen it now, uh, just so amazing. Helium balloons, uh, scriptures I I inside the jackets that you, yeah. you're wearing, but the wallpaper on the wall. That's right. You know, newspapers. People, are, uh, God is just giving God ideas. I, they are just God ideas. That's right. They're not man's ideas, they're God ideas. But we're back to saying, you know, we just look so often at Shakespeare, and Charles Dickens and the Bible, and we think, what, what is the difference? Which one shall I read? But for, for, for Christians in so many of these countries, wow, the Word of God is so precious. So if I said to you, what's your, one of your most precious verses? Oh, go on, so many verses, but Psalm 1611, I just love. And it says, I will show you the path of life. In my presence, there is fullness of joy and at my right hand there are pleasures forevermore. And I have proved over the years and years that I've been a believer that he is faithful. I wonder when you first received your Bible, maybe you were given it at a dedication, at a christening, and so you've always had a Bible. But maybe you're someone else a bit like Lorna who came to faith later in life, and that first Bible you received, oh, the wonder of it. There are so many people for whom the wonder of receiving their first Bible is, is just so precious to them. We've got some footage of when some smugglers managed to take some Bibles to some people in China and, and just the sheer ecstasy the first time that they laid hands upon a Bible for themselves. Let's just watch. Isn't that wonderful? So precious, the Word of God to them. Have you got your Bibles? 
we're going to pray together now and we're going to be praying that God is going to be touching the, the, the lives of so many people, that he's going to be opening uh, the eyes and closing the eyes so that people can take the scriptures in and know uh, fresh and new ways to do that. We're going to be praying that God's word is going to be reaching out into people's lives and touching them in a new way. Why don't you join us right now? as we pray together. Lorna, you're going to start. Lord God, I praise you that you are the door opener. And when you open doors, no man can shut them. Lord, I pray for everyone that is going into these nations. Lord, would you give them courage? Would you show them what to do? Would you show them what to say? And Lord, we pray where they need to be invisible, that you would make them invisible. And Father, you promise in your word that you will dispatch angels. And Father God, I ask that you would dispatch angels into these nations to bring the word of God to them. Lord, thank you for all these ideas that you give to our brothers and sisters. We thank you. We thank you that you are on the throne and that you are a God of justice. Mm. Amen. Amen. And Lord, we thank you for the words of Habakkuk where it says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Amen. Lord as the waters cover the sea. And we look forward to that day. And we thank you, Lord, that borders that seem closed to the gospel uh, will become open and are becoming open yes. for the work that so many are doing, brave men and women sharing the good news of the gospel. Lord, we thank you today for Patrick, uh, Patrick Klein and the work of the Vision Beyond Borders. We thank you, Lord, for Miriam and for Marzia. Yes. We thank you, Lord, for uh, Foley Hun Suk, and the pre who's the president of VOM Korea yes, and the work Lord. that all they're doing and for the fresh insight and new ideas that you're giving us yes, to how Lord. they can get the gospel yes. across borders where man thinks he's put up a border which is uh, stopping the word of God getting in. Lord, we praise you that this is your book and we pray, Father, that you'll continue to speak through it into the lives of people. And just in the same way that you're bringing people to yourself through dreams and visions today, that Lord, you'll do it as men and women open the scriptures and begin to read for themselves what your word says. Uh, and men Lord, I ask that you would melt all of our hearts, melt all of our hearts, so we learn how to pray for these brothers and sisters in other lands. And all of God's people said, Amen. Amen. Well, what more can we say? It's the Word of God, and the Word of God, when it dwells in people's hearts, change lives, doesn't it? Amen. And I, I just pray that through this programme, you have been enlightened and that you've been excited at what God is doing. But we want to say to you that just as people across the world are excited to read the Bible, we want the people in our own communities and our own country to equally have that excitement. May you be blessed as you read for God, as you read the Word of God tonight. Thank you for watching us today on The Persecuted Church.